conservative senators not only block conservative party auditor Michael Rooney from testifying today, they wouldn't even allow a vote on allowing him to testify. This is the very man that Senator Gerstein illegally tried to influence to kill the Mike Duffy audit. Why does the Prime Minister have his conservative senators blocking the testimony? Uh, the testimony, yeah. Uh, the testimony is right. <laughs> That's actually quite accurate. Why does the Prime Minister have his Conservative Senators blocking the testimony of Michael Runia if they have nothing to hide? The Honourable Prime Minister Secretary. Speaking of phonies, uh, Mr. Speaker, I guess my question would be to the Honourable Leader of the Opposition this. When he talked about the bribe that he was potentially offered, Mr. Speaker, he said, he said that he didn't know that what he was being offered was a bribe because he didn't actually open the envelope. Now, if he didn't open the envelope, how did he know that what he was being offered was a bribe, Mr. Speaker? Was it because he knew the mayor of Laval was crooked? And if he knew the mayor of Laval was crooked, why would he have been meeting with him, Mr. Speaker? I, it doesn't make sense. He's giving Clintonian-type answers to this, Mr. Speaker. Either he opened the envelope or he did it, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, according to NSA documents, they closely coordinated with Canada to conduct widespread surveillance during the G20 summit in Toronto. Did Communication Security Establishment Canada or anyone else in the Canadian government authorize in any way, shape or form the U.S. National Security Agency to spy on Canadian soil, yes or no? Well, we cannot comment on specific foreign intelligence activities or capabilities under law. This organization is prohibited from targeting Canadians. And furthermore, CSEC cannot ask our international partners to ask in a way that uh, circumvents Canadian laws. The opposition. We actually know that it's prohibited. The question was, did they do it? That's the question. Exactly right. Le Centre de la Sécurité des Télécommunications mm. n'a pas le droit d'espionner qui que ce soit en sol canadien, ni de permettre à un partenaire étranger de le faire, à moins d'avoir l'autorisation d'un juge. Est-ce que le CST a obtenu l'autorisation d'un juge avant d'autoriser et d'aider les Américains à nous espionner au Canada pendant le sommet G20? We don't comment on specific foreign intelligence activities or capabilities, and I, I've already indicated to the Mr. Speaker that this organization is prohibited from targeting Canadians. As well, uh, they cannot ask our international partners to act in a way that circumvents Canadian laws. That should satisfy the honourable member. The honourable leader of the opposition. We know it's prohibited. We know they're not allowed to ask. We know they need the authorization of the judge. The question is, did they respect the law, yes or no? And they fail to answer like usual. A criminal cover-up in the Prime Minister's office, using a foreign agency to illegally spy on Canadian soul? What is it about obeying the law that this so-called law and order conservative government doesn't seem to understand? Mr. Speaker, apparently Canada granted permission to the U.S. National Security Agency to spy on G20 leaders in Canada during the G20 summit three years ago. This espionage, including spying on some of the presidents and prime ministers of Canada's closest allies, could only have been authorized by our prime minister. So why would the prime minister let a foreign agency set up shop on Canadian soil and spy on our closest allies? And what does this mean for Canadian sovereignty? The Honourable Minister of National Defence. Mr. Speaker, Canadian sovereignty has never been stronger than under this government. <laughs> on specific foreign intelligence activities or capabilities, Mr. Speaker. CSEC must abide by Canadian law. They're prohibited from targeting Canadians. And furthermore, they cannot ask international partners to act in a way that circumvents Canadian laws, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Mal Peck. Mr. Speaker, a Conservative uh, spin on this issue is just not good enough. Spying during the G20 makes one wonder 
if there was other reasons for that extensive expenditures. Well, was the fake lake so expensive because it had miniature submarines and underwater cameras? Were the number of gazebos, were they so expensive because they were hot, hot wired to the NSA? Mr. Speaker, security of this nature has to be right up to the top. The Prime Minister has to be involved right up to his eyeballs. Would the Prime Minister come clean and tell Canadians why he provided access and facilitated this illegal activity? The Honourable Minister of National Defence. Uh, what a rant. Mr. Speaker, I can tell you about uh, CSEC, Mr. Speaker. I should point out to the House that all its activities are reviewed by an independent commissioner and, uh, and I can report uh, that for the last 16 years and indeed under Liberal administration, the commissioner has indicated that CSEC complies with all Canadian laws. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Sanchez Gulf Islands is rising on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My point of order relates to rule number 37, which governs our conduct during oral questions and particularly the only questions that are referred to at any point in the rules for the period we just experienced of question period are, quote, questions on matters of urgency may at the time, etc., be addressed orally to ministers of the Crown. I can find no provision that allows representatives of the governing party to throw questions at members of the opposition. The parliamentary secretary uh, to the prime minister evaded questions continually through the House today and instead turned around and put questions to the leader of the official opposition and also told the member for Halifax that he should ask questions to the member for King's Hands. I think it's objectionable, Mr. Speaker, under our rules, this isn't a point of debate I'd submit to you, to put questions to opposition members as a guise for evading the questions that are put properly to members of the uh, governing party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the same point, the Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, as you know, uh, it is not uh, the practice of you under the rules to uh, regulate the quality of, of uh, answers, in fact, not even the quality of questions. But it is a long-time rhetorical device, of course. In many cases, the best answer to a question is a question that poses and it illustrates the difficulties with the question that were posed and the inconsistencies. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, I think, as you know, uh, this is well beyond your jurisdiction to uh, get into assessing the quality of the various answers. 